about two years ago I installed the Samsung 970 Evo Plus NVMe drive into my machine. I went on the Samsung website and managed to get some of their specifications. As you can see they're teeny tiny but I'm going to summarize it for you. The drive has a sequential read speed of up to 3500 megabits per second, sequential write up to 2300 megabytes per second, and these are the specifications of Samsung's machine used to get that, so let's see if it all checks out. This is the interface you're going to get. Now the interface is quite small. Across the top we've got our menu. So we've got the settings that we can change for each of the performance benchmarks, including the type of data that you want written, the interval between each test, and the type of data in your queues and threads, whether it's sequential or random, and you can change those and mix and match depending on what you want to achieve. Now under profile, there are six different type of tests that you can run, including tests for peak performance and real world performance. Okay, so the standard interface is a little bit smaller, but this is how you enlarge them. We're going to enlarge it to about 300% just to make it easy to see. And we've also got a number of themes, so you can change the way that the interface looks. If you're that way inclined, I tend to find them a little bit gaudy, especially this one right here. Floral isn't really for me, neither is this one. So we're going to go back to the dark interface. Now under help, you can check the version that you are using. In this case, we're using version 7. Across the top, we can change the parameters of the test that we want to run, including the test count. I find that selecting a larger amount of data to be written, in this case 4 gigabyte, tends to stress the DRAM a little bit more and give you much more realistic results. But for the sake of brevity, I'm going to set it to one gigabyte. Now next to that, you can select your test drive. I'm going to select drive E, which only has 29% of data written to and there's plenty of room to run this test. And next to it, you can select the test unit. Usually leave it at megabytes per second. On the left, we've got our queues and threads. Now, I'm going to explain what these are just so you can get a better understanding of them and allow you to set the parameters of your test a lot easier. Here we have the sequential specification set at one megabyte of data for a queue depth of eight and 16 threads. And the way that I tend to explain what all this means is that I think of it as a bunch of people with a list of requests for information. The number of people are the threads, their lists are the queue depth, the data size are their requests on their lists. So if we have a look at our settings, if we were to use our analogy, we have 16 people, so that equals 16 threads. Each person has a list of eight requests, which is a queue depth of eight, and each request is one megabyte of data. At the bottom, you do have the ability to add some comments. Now you can save these results, which will save the comments as well. So let's add some comments in there. With all that done, you can run your test just by clicking on all. You can up the top here see the progress of each of the tests. And for the sake of brevity, we're going to speed it up a little bit. Okay, so we've got some results here. Now, what do these mean? Now, at the beginning, we showed you the maximum speeds that you can expect for sequential read and sequential write. And the good thing is that the results are pretty much comparable to what the manufacturer is saying we should be achieving. Now, I'm going to run a side-by-side -side comparison. I selected one gig for this test. I'm going to select four gig and see how the drive performs with a larger chunk of data. Okay, so the first result is the fastest theoretical speed that the drive can achieve. Now, generally, this is what the manufacturer prints on the outside of the box. The second result, or the second line here, is closer to the real-world maximums that you can expect to achieve. The third line are basically the maximum random performance of the drive. And the fourth line is the minimum performance you can expect from the drive at any time. 
So the results are okay for a Gen 3 drive and generally for most people you're going to be getting quite fast speeds, you're going to not notice any lag in performance unless you're writing huge amounts of data. Now what I like to do is have a look at the real world performance. We'll notice that there's an additional column that is added to this and in that column if you click down on it you'll notice that you have a whole heap of mix ratios to select from. So different read and write ratios. Now what I like to select here is a read of 70% and a write of 30 because I feel that emulates more of a real world scenario. Now this is a more realistic expectation of how you can expect the drive to perform during a real world scenario of reading 70% of the time and writing 30% of the time. But that's basically how you can check whether your drive is still in good condition and performing the way it should, whether it's time to give it the flick and replace it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Click like and subscribe for updates on new content.